Brock Page, congratulations. You're both one step closer to the title of Forged and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. All you have to do now is go home and reproduce an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the Aquafina. Kind of scared of it. The Aquafina is a distinctive sword hailing from the Ashanti Kingdom of West Africa around the 10th century AD. Initially used as a weapon of warfare, Ashanti warriors brandished the sword in one or both hands to deliver heavy strikes in close quarters combat. The sword's curved blade and dumbbell-shaped hilt were embedded with symbolic designs known as adinkra, evoking Ashanti principles like courage, valor, or heroism. Today, the Aquafina is a national symbol of the modern-day Ashanti city-state, carried by the king's royal emissaries at prestigious ceremonies. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Bring it on. Let's do it. We're back at my home forge. Let's make some blades. It looks like we're getting some thunderstorms, so I think Thor is favoring me today. All right, all right. The Aquafina was often made from iron, so it's very easy to work. I don't have to worry about annealing it. It's not going to harden in that way. Put some fresh coal here. I'm a lot more comfortable in a coal forge. It's what I'm used to working with. You got to get this up to forge welding heat. In order to create a blade that will have a very strong edge but still be mostly iron, I'll have to use this on my construction, folding the iron onto a high carbon steel and create a layered billet. But as I'm shaping this blade, I notice an issue. Damn. We've got stress cracks. Probably because of going back and forth between the thinning and shaping. If those get too severe or too deep, I'm in trouble. Day three, a bit of a setback. I couldn't go forward with the blade I'd been working on. So I scabbed together a bunch of bars of metal into one and forge welded them together. Not seeing anything that makes me more nervous than before. So today, I am getting ready to cut out the diamond shapes. I was going to try to cut something fancy, but I don't have time. Time is precious. Diamond symbol means precious. Now I'm going to figure out how to wire up my heat treating oven. Heat treating a blade is a very stressful process for the steel. With the number of forge welds involved in this blade, there's a real possibility that this blade could just peel apart. I didn't feel any bad noises. It's still a blade. I think I might actually be able to finish this thing. Doing some blade surgery this morning. It's day three. It's a very pivotal day. It's OK, little blade. It's going to be all right. Those cracks are only surface deep. I don't believe they're going to affect my blade's integrity. And that's just something I'll have to deal with via hammering. That went pretty well. I'm going to put some symbols on the surface of the blade. I've really been drawn more to the ones with the diamond shape in them. They're looking good. I really need to heat treat. The sooner I heat treat, the sooner I find out if this blade really is ready to go. Ooh, that feels aggressive. If anything goes wrong with the heat treat, I'll have to abandon it if I can't fix the problem. Got a real severe warp. Messed that all the hell up. There's no way this thing can be tested like this. I really need to get that warp out. I really don't want to be beating on this thing too much. I have to really be careful with how I hammer this. If it cracks, that would be it. Day four, this blade's got a whole lot of ugly going on, so it's kind of necessary to take that off. Today, I've got to make it pretty, finish the handle, and decorate the handle if there's time. The major hurdles of the blade are finally behind me, I think unless I discover something completely unexpected. No. I don't want the elimination I don't like right there. This might come back to bite me. But I can't spend time chasing problems. I need to move on. I'm not going to grind anymore in that spot. So my plan for the handle is to take this really nice looking African wood and turn the handle on the lathe. You just spin it and cut off whatever. It doesn't look like your finished piece. All right. I want to test it. It works. I am about to attempt doing gold leaf. It's going to take about 30 minutes for this sticky stuff to be ready for leafing. Looks like the historical ones. I build a weapon. This is the first time I really feel confident that I can win. 
Day four, I needed to straighten the blade toward the tang, so I hammered that a little bit. That's nice and straight. So I finally got my Aquafina straightened, but before I can really know if this thing's going through, I need to test it. All right, so let's take a few light swings. Let's do some harder swings. I don't see the judges hitting it any harder than that. Let me get on shaping this. I'm gonna start working on my handle, and I'm using an African wood tamarind. I think it'll suit this Aquafina well. That is what we're looking for. I've chose to incorporate some symbols on the handle, humility and strength, endurance. All of those elements are in this blade, and I'm very proud of it. It's gonna kill. Time for judgment, Paige. Blade Spitz, the Aquafina was a weapon used by the king's emissaries to dispatch their enemies. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon can do, I will deliver killing blows on this lamb carcass. Brock, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, see what she does. Ah, uh, Well, Brock, your sword bent. Cut around corners now. But blades bend in combat. It's reassuring to hear him say that, you know, oh, well, blades bend in battle. It gives me some reassurance that, you know, I'm not just out of the game. It's got a nice feel to it. I don't see any visible chips on the edge. Overall, your weapon will kill. Paige, you're next. All right, Paige, let's talk about the balance of your blade. It actually feels good for chopping. Your blade cut in deep, and it cut through the ribs, and those kinds of cuts will kill. Gentlemen, to test the strength of your weapon, I'll take two chops into these pieces of bamboo. Now remember, this isn't about what your weapon does to the bamboo, but what the bamboo does to your weapon. Brock, you're up first. No turning back. All right, so if you take a look at that, we've actually straightened the blade out quite a bit. It's very hard to line that blade up when it's got that bend to it, but it did cut, and I'm not seeing any damage to the edge. Nicely done. Paige, you are up next, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> You seem to have an issue developing right there, with a flake of metal starting to come up. Things like that start to give me pause about whether that blade is going to hold up as we go forward and test it. Still sharp. All right, I'm OK pushing this onto the sharpness test. Thank you, sir. Blade Smith, to see how sharp your Aquafina is, I will take your sword and deliver a slash across these ropes and cargo straps. Let's see how many they can cut through. Brock, you're up first. Let's do it. Ready. Okay, Brock, your blade was able to cut through two ropes, two of these ratchet straps, and almost to the fifth rope. I don't see that it's picked up any more of a bend. But overall, your blade will cut. Page, you're next. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Paige, we were able to cut through at least eight strands over here. I don't see that you picked up any bend on your blade here. And overall, your blade will cut. Thank you. Good job. Bladesmiths, the judges have finished their deliberation and I have a final decision. You've both done fantastic work, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is... Paige, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Brock, please surrender your weapon. I came here to win, but, you know, I'm happy with 
what I did. I learned a lot from the experience. Thanks for providing. I don't think you should ever stop challenging yourself. It's so back to the forge, making new things every day. So I'm excited to get back to that. Paige, congratulations. You are the Forest and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. How are you feeling right now? I'm very relieved. <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm a metal geek, and I've never won anything like this. What Forge and Fire pretty much forced me to do is step way the heck outside of my comfort zone. I'd like to thank Brock for being a worthy opponent. He gave me a fair run for the money. He really made me work for this one.